Me and my buddy Anthony, or as I call Ant-Man, we're going to the swamp meet today. Just swinging by real quick. All right, random, super random adventure today at uh, Cypress College. See if we can find anything. It's gonna have fun, look for some stuff, hopefully something else I got a homie with me today. <gasps> Everything in the world is pretty much closed again, so it feels really good to go and get out. He collects Pokemon. Let's see if we can find some stuff. I have a feeling. Isn't Pokemon like super hot right now? Yes, sir, and expensive. <laughs> yeah, true. I like watching people spiral into an addiction. I don't know if you came in at a good time, but. <laughs> those days when you don't have much time, those are the days when I normally find a lot of stuff. toys or video games or really anything at all and Anthony he's looking into Pokemon stuff he's gotten into Pokemon he wasn't really a collector but he started watching the show and he's like oh I don't like what you're doing I want to collect something and he's going for pokies pretty cool the visitor UFO it's like a 3d thing that spins from 1997 pretty sick Anthony found it good job man nice we're very accepting of all kinds here <laughs> so I'm here at a booth and I find Sonic 2 for the Mega Drive and also a Vector Man 2 manual. All right, so I just got Sonic 2. And the thing is, I didn't really need Sonic 2. And really, I only want the manual, but I don't want to ask how much for the manual because the lady probably would have been like, oh, five bucks. And what I did is I asked how much for Sonic 2 first, then she said five bucks, and then I asked for her to throw in the manual, because if I would have said how much is the manual, she would have probably tried to charge me five bucks, then five for this. She said, yeah, that's how you do it. You got a boat for five bucks. I didn't have Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive, I'll tell you that much. So that way, got myself five for both. No wonder it looked a little different. It's for the Mega Drive. Simple way, makes sense, and I got a boat, I like it. Love these little things, homies. Look, it's the lunch pail, it's metal, and it has the thermos. Tell me there are other people who remember homies, the little figures you would collect. Dude, this is actually kind of cool. Does anyone remember homies down there? Anybody? Found the lunch box. Maybe should have asked how much it was. Super Nintendo just, just sitting here at the end of the table all alone. So the guy was pretty much throwing away this Super Nintendo and putting it in like a junk pile because it was garbage. So there was that Xbox, or <laughs> Xbox. Yeah, uh, I like games. There was that uh, Super Nintendo on the edge of the table, but when I looked on the back, it was all broken off. And I asked how much for it, and I would take his garbage from him. And the guy's like, oh, I'm gonna just put it away then because it's broken. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll buy it broken, how much? He said 45 bucks. He said 45 bucks. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool, have a good one, man. <laughs> the heck? Oh, he's all broken. No. No. Hmm. I can still put him up. Broken Mario? Hmm. So, you never know how it's going to go this one. I mean, Anthony saw me ask, and I'm like, So I go to this guy, and I ask him how much for this Super Mario, and he says $3. And I say, eh, it's broken. I don't really want to pay that much. Three dollars. Three bucks. But then I saw this shy guy and he was like, hey dude, I'll do that for a dollar. And I was like, all right. But then I buy a shy guy from him for a dollar. And then when I'm walking away, and then when I was walking away, he's like, you want that Mario? And I'm like, how much? And he's like, a buck. He says, a buck for the Mario. Pretty big Mario, to be honest. So basically I got them both for two when he originally wanted just three for this one. Yes, sir. Wow. So I ended up getting both for two dollars instead of just Mario for three? Some weird deals going on today. Did you see that in action, bro? Scammer. Scammer? I mean, I'll take it. Hey. <laughs> da, I'm having fun looking at stuff today. Oh, dang. She was the jam back in the day. What was that movie with her where she robbed a bank? I have no idea. What's it like to be young? Hammer time. Oh yeah. Hmm. That's right. Look at this. Got this little ET for two bucks. Oh my gosh, it has a pull string. Uh, a vintage 1982 Universal ET pull string in near mint condition for like three dollars. Absolutely. I'll take that all day. Wait. What do you Still think? works. He said. Let me see. He said. 
Thank you. I am gonna take it phone home with me. Wait, I think it's back here already. Can't see him. All right, so I just found this sweet ET, but something I'm more excited on is a minute ago, I got this dope. In 1959, we got one of the coolest series ever, and that is Twilight Zone. When I found this VHS box, I've never really seen VHSs in this case. This is a Twilight Zone one. It comes with four different episodes. You were telling me you used to like it as a kid too, yes, right? Yes, sir. I was actually really excited because I never really see VHSs in this type of box. It's cool. Yep. You know what's funny about the guy, Rod Sterling, the host of the show. He uh, he's in you know he's involved in such a dark type of thing. Yeah. But he was born on Christmas Day. Oh my God. In real life, so pretty interesting. <laughs> How ironic. How ironic. And something I realized later. So I just got home and I was kind of looking over some of the stuff I got and I wanted to point out something really cool with this Twilight Zone VHS. And again, I realized this later. So here's the VHS. Pretty cool looking. I love the thickness of it. It has the episodes on the side right here. Some information on the back. But when you open the side like this, instead of opening the clamshell, you could open the VHS front part of the box. It has a message from Carol Serling, Dear Twilight Zone fan, gives you all of the information about it. This is amazing. And it unfolded to show you some of the different episodes and what they have going on inside of the episodes. Man, boom, has information about the episodes inside the eye of the beholder. <laughs> Please. Such a great episode. Such a uh, an episode that I feel like a lot of movies had copied uh, in recent history. Uh, this is one of the original ones that I know of. An amazing, amazing episode. That is awesome. Something about Rod Serling's narration. He's also the creator of the show. The Invaders is the one I was talking about earlier that I think is probably the most uh, prominent. I'd say that and Talkie Tina is probably two of the biggest ones. Look at the invader right there. Turn on. The little, and the robots come in at the end like me, and they look, I mean, they look cheesy so. now, but it was amazing at the time. Twilight Zone, so very, very cool from Columbia House video. I don't know when these came out or whatnot. I know in the back, back here, it does say 1988. So really cool. I'm guessing that's the date these came out. It just is so timeless and so perfect. And if you ever grew up watching any of these, I feel like God level for, old school horror vibe storytelling. Suspicion thrillers. Yeah, and they had big actors in these too. They are in your head and ingrained in your brain. It was just such an awesome, awesome show. Awesome for a dollar. This is such a cool case too. I love it. Mr. Ant-Man himself is getting all these Pokemon cards and it's so fun for me to watch because I know nothing about Pokemon cards. I've been around collecting stuff forever, but none of my friends really genuinely collected and knew what they were doing. Our old cameraman Chris did, but he wasn't really into like the lore of Pokemon and understood it. He just liked the cards. Uh, Mr. Ant-Man just bought a couple Pokemon cards. What'd you get, bro? I don't know anything about Pokemon, so I know I'm nothing. I'm still learning too, so bear with me. So don't judge him, all you Pokemon. So to see Ant-Man pick up all this stuff, he got a whole bunch of stuff. He's naming off names in it. First one, we got a little Zapdos with the trainer. Those, the names of the characters, I, they don't mean anything to me. And then I like this one because it's a little old school Typhlosion. Unless it's Pikachu or Bulbasaur. Got one of my favorite Pokemons, Genesec. Do you really, do you really have to catch them all? I got the shiny one, so I had to get the full art. I'm probably never heard of them, so. I just like this one because it caught my attention. Just big flash, you know, Rhyperior. But it's awesome to see someone who just recently got into collecting, having fun collecting stuff. Last but not least, this shiny Metagross. Love this one. That's cool for me to see. Probably 25 bucks, I think, for one, two, three, four, five, six cards. eBay, probably scalpers trying to get $100 out of it. I like watching people spiral into an addiction. Yeah, uh, you're gonna need therapy. And in the end, I walked out with Sonic 2, a Vector Man 2, Manual, a Big Mario, a Shy Guy. See, we're done with the swap meet and that's what I'm talking about. It's one of those days where when you don't really have time to look and you just kind of gotta go, go, go really quick, 
I feel like those are the days you find a lot of fun, cool stuff quick because you're just kind of willing to buy the stuff because you're seeing them quick. You don't have much time to think and you don't have much time to look. You're like, yes, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. And you end up going home with a lot of good stuff. An E.T. toy, by the way, 1982 Universal, Universal with the pull string. I think the condition of him is what really is cool. He is as clean as a whistle, obviously with some minor dirt that I can just wipe off. But look how good a condition like his eyes are and how lifelike they are. Uh, the information on the back is super clean, 1982 Universal Studios. And now that I'm home, I can hear he does say home. Speaking of being home, watch, listen. Home. Stream, uh, fully intact. I think that one might be a little, little hidden gem. And then uh, Twilight Zone on VHS. Too much good stuff. Great day, what a great day. And it's almost Christmas for us. You guys, it'll be past Christmas by then. So Merry Christmas and happy. Politically correct. Happy holidays. <laughs> I say Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, well, something's next. Here it comes. I'd say my favorite find of the day is debatable between that Twilight Zone thing and also this ET. Uh, this has been a good time. A lot of you may know already that I collect VHS promotional stuff, especially when it comes to video game related stuff. Recently, I got one that I never really showed, so I wanted to show it off a little bit because honestly, it's pretty darn beautiful. Game Brain, the official PlayStation strategy guide. Well, I keep hearing this voice inside of my head. When all I'm trying to do is beat some cool games. Well, coming inside is the first step, Tim. Right. Check this baby out. MTV presents Game Brain. It comes with some strategy guides for Blasto, Armored Core, Fighting Force, Final Fantasy, Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, Treasure of the Deep, NFL Game Day 98, and Tomb Raider 2. And again, honestly, these are some of my favorite things to collect in the video game world because it combines two things that I think is really cool and that's strategy for video games and the nostalgia version of doing those things. Again, with YouTube and everything, it wasn't like it back in the days. This is so awesome for people to put together different compilations and different hearing different style of voice narrations and different people showing off different ways that they play video games, but doing it in a way to where it wasn't widespread and a thousand different people doing on the internet. Dare I say millions of people doing on the internet. Beautiful box art, it totally screams MTV, screams PlayStation, screams 90s, late 2000s. I mean, you got pinks and yellows and purples and weird artwork and random lines. And you got Tomb Raider showing off a little bit in the back because teenage boys, it did it. Tomb Raider did it. And that's all I have for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying your life right now. Hopefully you can go to flea markets and swap meets where you are. I know the world's still, still in a weird place, but hopefully we can all get back to normal soon. Mostly I want a convention. I want a convention more than anything. But okay, make sure you are being respectful to each other out there, loving each other every day. That's it, see ya. Audio. <sighs> Child must pay for interrupting video. <laughs> All right, a package just arrived from a company and I don't even know what it is really, but it says in the box, Retro Handheld TV 108 games. Something like that in the box. So I'm gonna open it and see what it is. My guess is that it's a retro handheld mini TV with 108 video games on it. Could be a PlayStation 5. Looks like it's called the Family Pocket. And this is what it looks like. This is. Looks like some real retro stuff. So with that said, I think it's time to go real retro. Okay, now we can take a look at this thing properly. The family pocket. Not suitable for children, by the way. Wait, it says it is suitable for children over 15. My bad dog. Ooh, ah. Ooh, happy face. That's cute. Wow. Wow, it is a little controller. Here's the controller. Wow, that's what it looks like. Different, little, it has, it's, uh, looks like it's wired. It looks like a little mini 8-bit uh, dough or something like that. Pretty cool, looking so far. Ooh, I like the D-pad actually. Looks like we have, we have a second controller right here. There it is, I like it. Ooh, the lolly. Look at this, this looks like this is the TV. This is what you play it on, I think. Holy moly, this thing is, Tiny, I think three inches is the actual what it says inside of the box, inside of the booklet. And it takes some batteries, 
Uh, hopefully you can plug it in as well, you can. USB power as well. Looks like there's an AV out also. Okay, so might be able to play it on a TV. I'm gonna charge one of these controllers real quick in my son's room. Charge this thing up so that, uh, you know, I can play it. The charge light is live. Okay, we're back over here and it does have some AV cables so I can go plug this into the back of the TV. See if that's how this thing works. Yay! All right, it's all plugged in right now and the red light is on. So now I'm gonna test to see if I can get it on this and use my little controller. Also, I love that it says December 23rd. It's a Christmassy, it's like an old Christmas memory. Okay, I took off my VHS filter. So this turned on and it's one of those little, you know, 101 type things with all the games on packed in. I don't think the controller is charged enough because I'm not seeing anything on here. So I need to charge this thing up a little better. Maybe I'll throw some batteries in it just to test. And I got it on the screen, but I, I, I can't get rid of that noise. I'll see, uh, maybe mess around with the AV cables in the back a little bit, see if I can get rid of that noise. So I'm about as dumb as it gets. One of these pull tabs was in there, you know, right behind the thing. Basically you have to pull it in order for it to work. And look, it's on the screen. I, I still got that horrible noise. I might unplug the sound if that's gonna be the case or I'll try to figure it out for another minute. Okay, I wanna be 100% honest. I can't get off that sound. I don't know what to do. There it comes again. All I can do is unplug the AV cables to make it go away or the audio cable to make it go away. Otherwise, I'm gonna try it right now without the sound. There might be a way to fix it, but I just spent a little bit of time trying. I couldn't figure it out. I know this sounds silly, but I almost recommend just playing it out of here much better. Uh, the sound is better, everything looks a little clearer. I know it's not ideal, but I don't know. It just makes a little more sense out of here to me personally. So nobody asked me to review this or anything like that, but I will say overall, it's cool. I don't know what it costs. I would say it's worth 30 to 40 bucks as like a novelty type thing. I wouldn't say to use it as any sort of actual game playing device. I think it'd be something cool to put on like your office area just to kind of have it. You know, you can put it on the mini TV. I'd say for sure play it on the mini TV. You know, throw it on at break when a couple people are around and they want to put their hands on some controllers and play a little bit and have a little fun. But otherwise, in total, I wouldn't buy it as like a gaming machine. It's more a fun novelty piece. I, again, I have no idea what this costs. I'll say 30 to 40 bucks would be a, a price point to be able to get for a fun gift. That's it. I also want to make it clear that I don't think they were necessarily trying to sell this as some like pro way to play games because right on the top it says bookshelf retro TV clock plus wireless gaming. So I think it was more just like a novelty as I said. So with that, the fact that they're selling it like that after further thinking after I filmed a little while later, it makes sense. This is a cool little item, especially because they're not trying to sell it as like the gaming experience. This is more like bookshelf retro TV, a clock and some wireless gaming. Now I like it better. I got COVID. <laughs>